You know, something that's really easy and powerful to do inside of a GIS is the ability to ask questions of the data, to make queries or inquiries about that data. There are two main ways to do that. You can either ask questions of the, of the database behind the map or ask questions of the map features themselves. They're both quite easy to do. Let's demonstrate how to do that. Okay, let's get started. One of the things, as I mentioned earlier, that you can do with any GIS is ask questions of the data. This is fundamental to the whole process of geographic inquiry, which is asking a geographic question, gathering data, symbolizing and analyzing your data, uh, making some hypotheses as to what that data might uh, show or tell, and then testing those hypotheses. And all this might lead to new questions, and it might lead to the fact that you might need some more data. Uh, it might lead to an action on your part, acting on your newfound knowledge. But one of the fundamental things to any GIS analysis is to query or ask questions of the data. For example, I've got some data here, state-by-state state population, in this case from 1790 to 2010. I've got it symbolized in the change from 1930 to 1940. And as you can see, I've got some states that definitely decreased during the 1930s. So I'm essentially looking at the Dust Bowl uh, effects, but also there's a state over here, Vermont, that decreased in the 1930s as well. Okay, well let's say I want to ask questions of the data. One way to do that is I can go ahead and select by attribute. So let's say I want to know which states, create a new selection, which states decreased in population, how about during the 1950s now? So the change from 1950 to 1960 was less than zero. Okay, I could verify this, and it says it was successful. This is useful if you've got a long query statement. These are structured query language, or SQL statements. So I'm essentially asking the database, select from this data set, state 1790 to 2010, where, and I'm essentially filling in the right side of the equation. For those of you that have done programming, you know that it's, a computer is very picky with these SQL statements. It has to be exactly right. Fortunately, inside ArcGIS, it does the left side of the equation for you and all you have to do is pick from lists and it puts the quotes where it needs to put them and that sort of thing. So it's really uh, takes a lot of the work out of it. Okay, well, wonderful. We're asking the data set where the change from 1950 to 1960 was less than zero. Ah, so now I'm looking at 1930s changes, but I'm looking at 1950s changes here. So these states that are highlighted in this cyan color, and I could change the selection color by selection options. Right now I've got cyan, but I can change that if I want to. Looks like Arkansas and West Virginia. Let's go ahead and open the table. Let's say I didn't know those were Arkansas and West Virginia. Remember, the table and the map is t are tied together. So if I just look at the selected set, ah, West Virginia, the District of Columbia as well, and Arkansas. I didn't notice the District of Columbia, uh, but let's go ahead and zoom in on it and make sure that uh, it, it, is, it is also in cyan. So it decreased in the 1950s as well. OK, so let's do that again and go back to our previous extent. Okay, how about let's just practice that one more time. This time I'm going to select from states where, hmm, what about more recently? Are there states that are actually decreasing now? The change from 2000 to 2010 is less than zero. Ah, looks like um, Michigan, right? Let's go ahead and label, label features. So Michigan decreased in the most recent decade. Why is that? And why did states decrease during the 1930s? Why did states decrease during the 1950s? And conversely, why did they increase or decrease during those years? Uh, well, there are a variety of factors, right? There's unemployment, there's perception, there's Im immigration from outside the country, there is migration within the country. There are all kinds of factors, demographic factors, for example, uh, uh, the median age changes. There are structural changes, for example, rural to urban migration and the increase in agribusiness. So what have we done here? We've, we've used this select by attributes. Let, let's go ahead and select multiple things now. How about this? How about if we are interested in finding out 
whether the states that changed rapidly during the 1990s, let's say the state change, let's say we get unique values here. We haven't done that yet in this session. These are all of the possibilities of what the data shows. So in, 19, in the 1990s, we had a state that decreased by 6%, and the others are right here. It looks like there was a state that increased almost 40%. So let's say we're interested in designing a program where we needed to address the states that are rapidly growing in our study area. So how about the states that changed in the 1990s, over 20% population change, and then how about change in 2000 to 2010, uh, get unique values again, is over 20%. So in other words, they had over 20% growth in the 1990s and then again in the 2000s. Are there any states like that? Let's go ahead and say OK here. Now, since I have two statements, I need to, an AND in between. So let's find out if any state had increased by over 20% in the 1990s and over 20% in the 2000s. Are there any states like that? OK, let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. OK, it looks like if we open the attribute table, these four states, Idaho, Utah, Arizona, and Nevada, there they are, experienced over 20% growth during both of those decades. So what have we done there? We have just simply added another statement to our criteria and we're creating a new selection. Now notice that you can add to your current selection so if you ask a question and you want to add to it you can remove from your current selection you can select from your current selection so there's a variety of powerful things here that lets you adjust what you're selecting at any time and these are all select by attributes right here okay super There's also select by location. And so this is a, as the name implies, selecting by some sort of a position on the map. So for example, let's say we were interested in designing some sort of a study area and we needed to find out what states actually uh, had land that bordered the Mississippi River. Let's take a look at the rivers attribute table. We have a whole set of rivers in here, and we can sort by river name and then scroll down and select it manually that way inside the table. Well, we don't have to do that because we can go ahead and select by attributes and say, please, GIS, give me the name equals, and then get unique values. We can say, give me the Mississippi River. Scoot that up and say OK. All right, so there's the Mississippi River. I'm going to go ahead and clear out my state's selection. OK, now I just have the Mississippi River selected. All right, so how about this? Let's go ahead now and use Select by Location. If I want to select features from states now that intersect, let's scoot this up a bit. So select features from states, and our source is going to be rivers. I'm going to say OK there. Now these are the states that actually have land that touches the Mississippi River. OK, so how many states is that? Go ahead and open the attribute for states. Scoot that table over here so you can see it. And it looks like there are 10 states that intersect. Now not only that, but we can get their population right now, right? We can go over here to population 2010 and do a uh, statistics on that. And OK, the population and the population total is looks like 53,958,000 for those 10 states. And we can also go back to our map and output this in a variety of formats.
So what we've done in this segment is just a simple illustration, but think of other data that you could use these techniques. You could find out all the water wells, for example, that are within 10 kilometers of a certain place on a river where a truck overturned and dumped some nasty chemicals into the uh, local uh, wetland, let's say. You could find out all the countries in the world that had a certain export of this percent and a certain import of that percent. You could find out all the neighborhoods in your community that have a median age of X and a certain lifestyle of Y. You could find out all of the areas in a certain kind of, let's say, the chaparral biome that had been scarred by fire three times in the last ten years. So these are the kinds of questions that you can ask with a GIS. Think about other data and other scales that you might want to ask uh, questions of. And there are a variety of ways to do that. We've only concentrated on two, select by attributes and select on location. There are other ways to query the data that we haven't had time to go into in this video. But I invite you to explore and find out more. Thanks.